In this video, we're going to go over electrolytic cells. Electrolytic cells are systems that use electrical energy to drive non-spontaneous reactions. So in many ways, it's the opposite of a galvanic or voltaic cells. Galvanic cells use a spontaneous redox reaction to produce electrical energy. Electrolytic cells use electrical energy to produce chemical energy. Okay. So here we're going to take a look at an example. In our example, we're going to look at the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. So this is liquid sodium chloride, not aqueous. And here, if we take a look at the reaction, we're going to see that the cell potential is going to be negative. All right? And that should make sense. There's a negative value because this is a non-spontaneous process. So we're forcing it to occur using electrical energy. So here we have our setup of our electrolytic cell and the solution here is all liquid sodium chloride. So that means there is liquid sodium chloride all around this solution. Now, if we take a look at the setup, we can tell that there's a major difference from galvanic cells, which is the presence of a battery. The battery is important because it's going to dictate the direction of the flow of electrons. All right. The next thing we want to take note of is what are the half reactions that are taking place? Well, here, if we look at the reaction, we can take a look at the oxidation states. So Na plus has, uh, or NaCl is an oxidation state is plus one for sodium minus one for chlorine, and in Na, now it's zero, and in chlorine, it's also zero. So what we can see is that the Na plus is getting reduced, it is gaining an electron, and the chlorine, the chloride ion, is losing an electron to form chlorine gas. And from this, we can also see why this is a non-spontaneous process. You have a halogen that is losing an electron to an alkali metal. That is not a favorable process. Okay, now with this setup, with this battery, as I said, the battery is going to dictate the direction of the flow of electrons. And in a battery, with these two plates, you have a big plate, which is the positive plate, and a small plate, which is the negative plate. So electrons are naturally going to want to move towards the positive plate and away from the negative plate. So this is going to be the direction of the flow of electrons. Now, just following the direction of the flow of electrons, we know that electrons are going to be going to the electrode where reduction is occurring. And since we know that sodium is getting reduced, that means here we can write the half reaction for sodium, which is Na plus plus an electron, which if we want to balance this, we can write two sodiums plus two electrons is forming two Na uh, atoms. And here, another difference is that these electrodes are not made of sodium or chlorine. So the electrodes here are simply inert. They're not participating in the redox reaction. So here, the sodium cations is getting reduced. So that means this electrode, even though it's inert, we're still going to call it the cathode. And it's called the cathode because it is the, it is the site of reduction. At the other electrode, that means electrons are leaving this other electrode. And that's because of this other electrode, chlorine is being oxidized. So you have two Cl minus that are giving up two electrons to form chlorine gas. So this electrode here is called the anode. This is the site of oxidation. So what we can note here is that around this region, we're going to be producing a lot of sodium metal, a lot of Na. And around our anode, we're going to be producing chlorine gas. And the chlorine gas, of course, as a gas, is going to go ahead and bubble out of the system. So the next thing we can talk about is, remember, it's important for an MCAT to know about the charges of the anode and the cathode. So in this case, electrons are moving from the anode to the cathode, but this is a non-spontaneous process, which is helpful for remembering to determine the charges of the electrodes. 
you have to ask yourself, what do electrons not want to move towards? And electrons do not want to move towards a negative. So that means here the cathode is going to be negative and the anode is going to be positive. Electrons do not want to leave a positive. They don't want to move towards a negative, but they're being forced to by the battery that has been added to the system. Okay. So this is how an electrolytic cell works. And at first you might notice that there's a lot of differences from galvanic cells, but there's actually not too many differences. For instance, in both galvanic and electrolytic cells, the anode is the site of oxidation, the cathode is the site of reduction. Electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, right? None of those parts have changed. So the main differences between a galvanic cell and an electrolytic cell is Number one, an electrolytic cell requires an external voltage source. Number two, electrolytic cells are non-spontaneous, whereas galvanic cells are spontaneous. And number three, if you look at the charges, in an electrolytic cell, the anode is positive and the cathode is negative. In a galvanic cell, the anode is negative and the cathode is positive. So those are the three main differences between galvanic cells and electrolytic cells.